Welcome to another video. This is the instructor, Advanced Kung Fu from SuperSQA.com. In this video, we are going to talk about what is automation. Finally, we're here. This is my favorite part. This is what I do day in and day out. And this is the most fun part about QA, at least in my opinion. So you already seen an example of an automation about the beginning of the course, maybe the second or third video. You saw a demo of an automation script, basically an automated test where it's going through the checkout process. It actually loads the page, opens the browser, loads the page, uh, search for an item, add to cart, and check out. All of that is an example of an automation, and we're gonna hear, we're gonna see the same example here and uh, more examples. Okay, that we're just gonna discuss in general about the automation, what you need to do to learn automation. It's exciting, but you still gotta learn it, right? So uh, basically, the other term for automation is software engineering test. Most of the time when people refer to software engineering test, it's not manual testing. There's more automation testing plus more. So an automation tester creates test case just like a manual tester does. So it does everything what a manual tester does plus more, which means it will, the automation engineer actually writes code and less of the other stuff, right? Because you can't possibly do everything. So in terms of working with the other teams and manually testing, there is a minimal amount of testing. A lot of job positions, if you see, they say, oh, 80% automation and 20% manual. But you still got to do a little bit of manual work uh, before you do automation. And plus, if you are automating a test case, you have to have executed it manually, right? You have to come up with the steps. So you have to do it manually, go over all the steps, then you can write automation for it, okay? So everything else, filing bugs, uh, we're dealing with releases, working with the different teams, communicating with third parties and overseas, all of that is what an automation engineer would do. So why automation? Why is automation so popular or so big? Why do we need it? Because it is super fast, right? It, it, it's automation. It's a software doing something you would manually do. So it runs really fast, which means you need to cover a lot of tests. Typically, a team will have hundreds, if not thousands of tests that need to be executed. And if you if you are trying to execute hundreds of tests manually, it's going to take days to do it, right? But automation would actually execute all that in, in a matter of minutes, right? Because it can run in parallel. Even though it's running single-threaded, it's still going to run way faster than a human can actually do it. So that is one of the most the benefits. And it's repeatable, right? You can run, you're not limited with time, basically. I mean, you are still limited with time because like I have a suite that takes an hour to run. It's about 300 tests and it takes about an hour to run because it, it does a lot of things. But, so you are kind of limited. I mean, I, I still need an hour, but if I was to do all that manually, it would literally take a week. For the 300 test cases, probably more than a week if I was to do it. I wouldn't even attempt to do it, all right? So it, you can run it multiple times a day and you need to do that. And accuracy, once you write the code and you make sure it does what it's supposed to do, I mean, your code makes sure it does what it's supposed to do, then it's, it's unlikely you're gonna introduce errors, right? Unless you go make changes to the code, it's unlikely to, to introduce new errors. But if you're manually testing, you know, it's humans, right? I do, I do it this time one way and I do it next time a different way so I can actually make mistakes. I can actually cause errors. So I think these three reasons are the most important reasons. It's fast, it's repeatable, and it's accuracy. You might be wondering why is it, why do you care if it's repeatable? You test it once, it works, one, you're done. That's not true. Software breaks all the time. Everything is interconnected, right? In the background, the way software works, there's a lot of libraries, every other software, like everything depends on. So when you make a change in one place, you can, bring some, you can break something in a different place you had no expectation, right? Let's say, for example, you make a change in how user is logged in. So you make a change in, in a login page, right? And uploading a photo, you would think that functionality is not related to actually logging in, but you really never know. At the back end, you don't know how things are designed. They might be sharing the same thing. Something in the background, they, it's possible they're sharing. So you make a change in login, and you test it, it works. And if you don't test the rest of the software, you never know what else you have broken, right? And it's impossible to manually test everything. So having an automation suite, that's what's going to help you. You make a little change in a login page, but then you're going to test the entire site in within minutes, right? So you feel much more comfortable about releasing your change. So that is why it's important to be repeatable. And uh, you run it multiple times, like smoke test run 
small test, uh, small tests are like the most basic test, small test. Those run like a lot of times, every few minutes sometimes, right? Depending on how, how often you make changes. And regression change regression tests, which are tests that test pretty much everything, they run a few times a day, once a day. It all depends on the team and uh, the company. So how do you become an, an automation engineer and what are the skills? What do an automation engineer know? So I put very few lists here, okay? So this is not meant to intimidate you. I know it looks a little bit intimidating, right? If I was to see this years ago and before I started, I'm like, oh my God, I need to know all this to be an, to be an automation engineer. And I would be intimidated. I know that. But this is something you would slowly build up, right? You don't need all of this. At, at the beginning, the only thing you need really is a programming language. So it can be Python or it can be Java. So this is an icon for Python. I just decided to use icons because they're really cool. Or Java as another programming language. You definitely have other options, right? You can learn C Sharp or JavaScript. But those two are very popular in automation, super popular. And I would say they're equally popular. And I'm more biased to Python because I deal professionally. I work with Python all day, every day. And, and most importantly, I absolutely believe it's much easier to learn Python than to learn Java. Uh, it's just the way the, the way it's designed, right? Java is a strict tree, uh, a strict language, and this is a, a loosely typed language. So it's, it's just easy. This sounds like plain English. Uh, Java is a little bit more complicated. People might argue the fact that Java is super strict. If you learn Java, they say it's easier to learn the other languages. But in my opinion, it's super hard to learn at the beginning, right? When you don't know anything and you learn something super strict, it's going to be difficult when you can actually learn something that's more friendly. And the popularity is is growing like crazy with for Python. So my recommendation is to start with Python, but the rest of them, right? So this is a Linux icon. This is a cloud, like this is AWS, but there's a bunch of different clouds, right? Uh, working with the cloud, working with the terminal. So the terminal, I just put it here, but if you have a computer, you have a terminal. I'm sure most of you guys have never used it. I've never used it before, before I started uh, in this career, but it's the most basic thing. You know, like you just have to do it. You, you use the terminal to work with all of this. Everything you see here, you use this. This is like the interface. Then there's technology like Docker. So I learned, I was, I was two, three years into my career before I started, I, before Docker became popular and I need to learn it. Now it's my favorite thing. And Docker by itself is nothing without having knowledge of at least one of the program languages. Then you have a database, SQL, you, you're going to need some basic understanding of databases, how to read and write from databases. Um, there's Jenkins and there's Selenium and there's, this is like an IDE. This is just a text editor, right? So I just chose some icons here, but you're going to learn a lot more than this, but everything happens in small steps, right? So you just focus on Selenium, I mean, on Python. You learn Python, the first language, right? If you decide to go Java, that's fine too. I'm not going to discourage you to do it, but I'm telling you, it would be easier to learn to start with Python. So you pick a programming language and you start, and that's going to be ch the chunk of your work, right? Then to, to this is programming. It's just in general programming language. Then to actually run automation, to actually work with a browser, then you're going to need Selenium. Selenium is just a library. Whether you're using Java, or whether you're using uh, Python, there is a Selenium library you're going to use with one of those languages, plus other languages too. So it's very easy. Once you learn Python, the Selenium part is very easy. So in my course, I have a full course that's basically two courses in one. It will teach you Python from scratch. It just starts literally from scratch, assumes you don't know anything. Because when I started, I learned myself. So I know how how it, how it goes. And I designed it with the, with people with, with complete beginners in mind when I designed the course. Then it goes into Selenium. So majority of it is Python. Then there's a little bit of Selenium because the concepts of Selenium are easy. Then majority of it is practice, right? So programming is like a sport. That's what I say. I've been watching Steph Curry shoot three-pointers for a long time, right? And I can never shoot like him because I'm not practicing. I'm just watching him. So you can watch me write a program all you want and you will never be able to write a program. It's like a sport. You actually have to practice it. So my course has tons of practice, tons of automation to actually, you know, to actually learn. Otherwise, you really can't learn it. So if you if your idea is to just watch videos, that's not going to work. You actually have to write the code, okay? So that's what this uh, slide is meant to be. It's also meant to excite you. I mean, imagine how cool it is knowing all this. So me personally, I know a lot about 
everything here, right? Like some with well, Java, I, I know Java, but I'm not like super good at Java, just like I am in Python. But you know, Docker is so awesome. Selenium is so awesome. Jenkins is so awesome. It's just such a cool thing being able to know all these things. So you should get excited that man, in a couple of months, I'm going to know how to deal with all of those things. So that, that should be another motivation for you to learn um, automation. Okay. So basically I've, I've discussed this already, but the main thing you want to focus on is learning a Python or a programming. I want to say a programming language, but I, I recommend Python, like I said, so you can take my course. My course is pretty awesome. It's a great course. Use a coupon. I, like I explained before, and uh, yeah, just use a coupon or email me if you, if you, if for the price is no good for you. So look for other resources. Obviously, superrescue.com is my site and I think it's the best for beginners. But of course, do your research. Um, learn basic HTML, okay? So HTML is extremely simple. It's not a programming language. HTML is not a programming language. It's very static. It's very, uh, very basic, right? But everything you see on the page, everything you see on the web is made with HTML, the way it looks and feels is a combination of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So if you're automating it, if you are testing a web page, you actually need to know how HTML works just in a very basic level. So uh, learn to do a quick tutorial on HTML. And you can do that in parallel while you learn in Python. See, the Python part has nothing to do with HTML. But when you're done with the Python part and get to the Selenium part, that's when you need HTML. So when while, while you're learning Python, at the same time, do a quick little, um, uh, quick refresher type of uh, tutorial on HTML, okay? I, I do recommend that because Selenium will be a little bit confusing if you don't actually do HTML. But if you do take my course, I have like what, a 20 or 30 minutes uh, crash course on HTML and that's really all you need, okay? So the more you learn, of course, the better, but to be able to work with Selenium, that's all you need. So my course actually teach Python, and Selenium, but and a little bit of HTML, of course, SQL database and stuff. It's a pretty cool, pretty cool course. There's a lot of bonuses in there. Okay. So like I said, uh, practice automation on a demo e-commerce site. I mean, if you have a site, you can practice automation on any, in any site, on any public site. You can go amazon.com, cnn.com, ebay.com, facebook.com, whatever you want. But if you want an e-com site that you can, you can just do whatever you want to do. I have a site called demostore.spursql.com. I created this for you guys, just for the students. And I also have a course on how to create that site on your own. You can create it on your machine, like on your laptop, whatever you have on Windows or a Mac. You can create a, a site that's an e-commerce site, super easy. And I have like a one-hour course on how to do that. So you can check that out in supersqa.com.